According to a number of recent studies, the COVID-19 recession is hitting working women the hardest. In 2008, it was men's jobs that were impacted most. Here with us to talk about the problem and some long-term solutions is Glendalyn Thames, Deputy Commissioner and CFO, COO from the Connecticut Department of Economic and Community Development. Welcome, so glad to have you here, Deputy Commissioner. And we just mentioned studies that say that this is a problem. Are you all getting this sense too that, that the pandemic is really hurting working women? Absolutely. Um, I think, you know, the disproportionate impact that COVID has had on um, women in general, um, but also the heightened challenges for women of color um, have been faced with, you know, longstanding pre-existing health, racial and social justice disparities um, is, is really well documented from a national perspective and also a, a statewide um, perspective. And so we have been really kind of making sure that we're prioritizing data in a way that we have our finger on the pulse so we can then, you know, deploy investments and, and policy measures um, to provide those interventions. Well, you know, it, to follow up on that, the number of small businesses that women and particularly women of color had been uh, forming before the COVID-19 really had been a greater and greater share of small businesses uh, form, form formation. What, um, what, what have you seen in small business formation since March? Yeah, so I mean, you and you highlight a very important um, data point that I often like to use, because for me, that was that's the North Star. And that was like a silver lining of kind of the progress that was happening before COVID. So you had an estimated 42% uh, of all businesses that were owned by um, women but half of those women-owned businesses in the U.S. were owned by minority women. So that representation, you know, estimated at a 20% increase over two decades, right? And so one of, women of color were really becoming the face of, of women-owned businesses. And so we are, you know, at a critical juncture where we don't want to lose that, that ground. Um, and while, you know, formations are up, we're still understanding the data relative to, you know, what that looks like for um, women-owned and minority-owned businesses and working closely with the Secretary of State on that kind of data mining, because honestly, that wasn't something that, you know, the state had a really good handle on um, pre, pre-COVID. And, you know, one of the first initiatives, I, I've been on board for the last uh, year and a half, it, although it seems like five years, COVID <laughs> does that, right? <laughs> Um, we had um, launched an initiative with the Secretary of State's office because when businesses form um, and their annual kind of certification that they're still a business or what have you, we weren't necessarily tracking that demographic data. And so we initiated uh, a survey and, and asked, started asking those questions relative to, you know, are you a woman-owned business? Are you a veteran-owned business, a minority-owned business? So we're starting to get a better handle on what the current state and profile is of our businesses so we can do a, a, a direct targeting. Um, and, and again, that informs our, our policy. So we, we had this underway pre-COVID um, and it put us in a much better position to be able to respond and directly reach out to those businesses. Some of these businesses were able to get PPP loans, but but some were not for whatever reason. Uh, are there grants and loans that the state can help them with? Yeah, so, you know, great question. Um, early on um, in this pandemic, you know, we've kind of looked at this whole process in four stages, right? So there's the kind of immediate crisis response, um, the reopening, uh, recover, and then really reimagining what the next economy is going to look like, because we know this is really propelling us to that next economy. And so on the response side, we really, you know, early on launched a recovery bridge program that was, you know, complementary to the PPP dollars and the idle dollars that were coming out of the SBA. So in total, we've already, you know, provided over $45 million to small businesses. 
um, and, and over 2,400 small businesses that have been able to capture those loans. And just this week, Doobie um, and Kevin, as you probably saw in the news, we launched a $50 million program for small businesses. And these are our smallest businesses. So 20 or few um, uh, employees and or you have to have a 1.5 million, um, no more than 1.5 million in annualized uh, payroll expenses. Um, because we know that many of those small businesses, many of which are women and minority businesses, were not able to take advantage of those PPP loans and idle loans that have now kind of, you know, uh, dried up a bit and we're waiting for that next stimulus package coming out of the federal government. Where do, where but this $50 businesses... million dollar program is really going to be a, a lifeline for those small businesses. Where do small businesses go to apply? As we So at, we just launched a program um, this week. They can go to businessct.gov. Um, and the application will be online the week of November 9th. So right. right now we're calling this period um, before November 9th uh, a window of learning, right? And so we're working with all of our uh, yes. partners, the Women's Business Development Council, the Spanish American Merchants Account, uh, a Merchants Association, the Small Business Development Center, all of our partners to make sure people are in the best position, know what to expect, all the documentation that they need. So when the applications go Thank you. live Thank the week you, of the ninth, Patricia. they're ready to apply. Uh, we're all in a window of learning. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Thank you for having me. The Democrats hold a commanding lead uh, and majority in Connecticut State Senate. Can they keep it or even increase it? The Hartford Current's Chris Keating joins us right after this.